welcome back, welcome back, and welcome back. We are going to be making Navajo tacos today. Yes, we are. Vegetable oil, cumin, black pepper, that is salt in that container. We're going to use some chilies, garlic salt, smoked paprika. We're going to use these chilies. We're going to use those petite uh, diced, uh, I was going to say potatoes, but tomatoes. We're going to use some kidney beans, that's a red onion, some cilantro, some lettuce, some tomatoes, some limes, and of course you need the hamburger meat. And in this bowl, I've got two cups of flour. I've got, um, what was it, uh, two and a half teaspoons of, um, bacon powder, and then a half a, no, a whole teaspoon of salt. I had to think about what I put in there. Okay, so here's your shot of everything. And, of course, we need those limes. And then, of course, you're going to need sour creams, you know, and stuff like that. And we're going to make a little pico de gallo. So here's your shot. Let's get cooking. All right, the very first thing that I'm going to do is get the bread portion of this done and get it going. And then I'm going to get that hamburger meat going. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour. Two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. A teaspoon of salt. And then now we're going to put in, had to measure, a cup of warm water. Not hot, warm. And then we're going to mix it together with a fork. And that's what we're going to do. And you can double this recipe to have more if you want. Completely up to you. Do what you want. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to get this dough-like. We don't need no yeast for this bread. I mean, you can absolutely do that, but we don't need no yeast for this bread, let me tell you. We don't need no yeast. No, we don't. We do not need into yeast. See, look, our dough is already formed. Look at that. You can use your hands. You don't have to use a fork. I just find it easier for me to use a fork. Just my thing, okay? You want to get it all incorporated. It's going to be a little gluey. I'm going to try to get those edges, get all that stuff out of there. We want to use as much as our product as we can. And ain't nobody trying to waste, right? Okay, and then I'm going to move this out of the way. Let me move this, and I'll be right back. Okay, I had to give you a different angle so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and spray my hands. You don't have to wear gloves, but I've got fingernails. They're not the longest nails, but... Getting all that stuff up from underneath them. I don't want to bother with it. So you've seen me do that before. Spray my hands down so it doesn't stick so much. And then move this out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is put on a little flour. Yeah, this time I'm just going to use my little surface here. I'm using this side because this side is oily. Spread it all about. Then we're going to knead this is what we're getting ready to do. I know you've heard of kneading before. That's all you do. And we got to do this for five minutes. Yep. Five minutes. We got to do this for five whole minutes. And you just keep going. And it gets a little gluey. Add a little more flour. Just a little bit. Try to be mindful of how much flour you add, okay? We don't want it to stick too bad, but we do need to work it in. Oh, yeah. And so I got to do this for five minutes. Flipping it over, flipping it over, flipping it over, pushing it down, and flipping it over. All right? I am going to add a little more flour to this, though, because she's just a little bit too, more glue too gluey for me. I'm just going to put all that on there. We'll work it out. There we go. We're going to work this out because she needs to get a little bit more firmer. And that was probably a third of a cup that I just put down. You see what I mean when I say a little more firmer? You see what's happening? Sometimes you have to do that. Flatten her out. Bring her back in. Bring her back in. Flatten her out. Bring her back in. And I got to do this for five minutes. And this is the basics for doing any bread. This is kneading. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. I shouldn't be using gloves. It works so much better with regular plain old hands. But, 
She ain't doing that today. All right? So that's what we have to do. Just keep going. I probably need to take my gloves off and quit tripping, right? <sighs> Mercy. All right, so I'm just going to keep going, and I'll be back. Five minutes. All right. I've been doing this for two minutes. And this is what I'm talking about. Stretch it out. Pull it in. Don't go nowhere, baby girl. I'm going to need you because I can't touch this. All right. So I got to do this for three more minutes. Flatten it out. Put a little body weight into it. It ain't going to hurt nothing. And that's what we're going to do for a total of five minutes. All right. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I've made a mess, okay? Get a clean bowl. I formed it into a ball. I'm going to put some plastic wrap over this and make it as tightly as possible. And let it sit on the counter for 10 minutes. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to clean up this mess. And then we're going to get started on that ground beef. I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, she's already starting to expand. And it's only been five minutes, but we're getting ready to get this ground beef going. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the ground beef in here. And actually, for this recipe, you only need a pound, but I always do extra. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to let those onions cook right on with that. So all we're going to do is brown this meat up at this point. Ten minutes. I'll be back, and then we're going to do something else. All right, we've got that ground beef all browned up. That's what you want. Okay, and so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in... Some, oh, that's the wrong container. I'm going to put in some um, chili powder. And all you need is, I would say, about two teaspoons, but about a tablespoon because I had extra ground beef. Then we're going to go ahead and go in with the cumin. And I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of that. And if you have the taco seasoning pack, feel free to use that. Okay? I'm just going to take this off because it's taking too long to get out. There we go. So I'm about using about a tablespoon. And then we're going to put in a little bit of this black pepper. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of that. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of that paprika. All right. I'm going to give that a little jush. But if you got the Taco Bell seasoning pack, you can use that in place of the cumin and the paprika and all that. The chili. There's just nothing like making this particular dish using the good old-fashioned spices, okay? It looks yummy. You see how good that looks? Look at that. But you can absolutely cheat. Nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. So now we're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of that garlic salt. And put it about a tablespoon of that. Okay. And then we're going to go in with, um, what is this? My diced tomatoes. We're going to put in this whole can. Yes, yes. We're going to put in that whole can of the, chil the chili, the kidney beans. You can put pinto beans in this too if you want. You absolutely can. Put whatever you want. Dish it up. Make it your own. Okay? And then I'm going to go in with the chilies. And I think I'm just going to use half of this can. That's more than enough for me. Alright? We're going to dish this on up. And we're going to let this simmer for 10 minutes. And while those flavors are getting all incorporated, getting to know one another, I'm going to cut this fire down a little bit to a medium low. Let that stuff sit in there and get to know one another, become best of friends. And while this is doing what it's doing, I'm going to change your camera view. We're going to get started on that bread. All right, because it don't take but a few minutes to fry it up. All right. So I'm just going to let this simmer and I'll be back. All right, here we go. I'm going to save that plastic. We're going to need it. Well, didn't mean to bop you. So now we're going to take this out. You can use your fingers. Or you can use a little scraper and get it out of there. 
if you can see what I'm doing. But what we need to do is, we need to put down a little flour first. That was more than a little, but that's all right. Fun times, let me tell you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to cut it into some pieces. All right? Get them as even as you can. All right? Yeah, I could have used my apron. My daughter's talking to me. She said, you could have used your apron, huh, Mom? Yeah, I could have. So, we're going to cut it into fours. All right? And once you cut it into fours, we're going to cut it one more again. Yes, I said one more again. All right? I decided to put down the flour because I did not want uh, the, the wax paper. I didn't want to make that mess again. No, I didn't. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. Let me move this over so you can see me cut this one. All right. So now we have a total of three, six, seven, eight pieces. All right. You don't have to do nothing special with it. Put a little flour on your hands. And we're just going to make these into a little disc. You can make these as big or as little as you want. But I'm going to roll mine out a little bit. I need to put a little flour on that, Donna. Roll them out just a little bit. You can't see nothing I'm doing, can you? No, I'm fine, baby. Thank you. I'm going to roll it out and then I'm going to show you what I've done. Can't move the camera right now because I've got my hands nasty. Sorry, but I'm using a little rolling pin. I'm just rolling them out. They don't have to be a perfect shape. None of that. You just want to roll it out so you can get it in that pan and get it fried up. See? You just want to roll it out. There's my first one. Put it under some plastic wrap. Let it wait until you're ready for the next one. That way it doesn't dry out on you. Put it under that plastic wrap, and I'll show you what, the, what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Let me move some of these over so you can see this roller this time. All right. I'm just roll her out. That's all you're going to do. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. None of that. Just roll her out. All right. That's all you have to do. You can make them in the hearts if you want to. All right. So I'm just going to continue to roll the rest of these out. And then we're going to get them in the pan. Make sure you got your oil heating up. You want to put, I'd say, about two cups of oil in the pan, okay? All right. And I will be right back. All right. As you can see, I just put those in. It's only going to take a couple of minutes. And that's what we're going to do. About two minutes each side, depending on how your stove and oven works. But you see what I mean about the size? Who cares? If you want straight circles, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, I'll be back when it's time to flip. This is how they are looking. And I'm getting ready to take them out. And we're getting ready to assemble. I'm going to give them one more minute. I'll be back. All right, there is our Navajo tacos. You can see that shell is hidden underneath there. Oh, yeah, it's there. There's the meat that we made. Cheese, cilantro, lettuce, tomatoes. You can put sour cream, guacamole. I believe my daughter's going to put guacamole on hers. And a little bit of lime. Oh, my goodness. Navajo tacos. Make it and top it any way you want to. Look at that. We made that bread. Can you see that bread? We did that. Yes, we did. Things made easy with Gigi, you guys. All day, every day. Everybody be blessed and stay safe. And you know Gigi's going to see you next time. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.